Right, first of all, guys, thanks for coming. I know it's been a long a couple of days for all of you. If I can just ask you to introduce yourself. I'm Simon Doherty. I'm the president of the British Veterinary Association. I'm David Charles. I'm president of the Association of Veterinary Students. And I'm Amanda Bogue, and I'm the president of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. OK, now you've all been uh, talking at this show. So uh, what have you been uh, discussing um, in the BVA stream? Quite a lot of different issues. Uh, we've, it tends to be that we use BVA Congress as an opportunity to kind of cover a lot of the sort of contentious issues that um, that are facing the profession at the minute. So uh, we've had we've taken the opportunity to uh, kind of get a few good news stories out there. So we've uh, launched the My Vet Future um, Careers Hub, uh, which is uh, which is fantastic, and we've had some really good feedback on that already. Um, we've had a number of different presentations around One Health, um, including the Wildridge Memorial lecture today, uh, which was uh, very much uh, we had a really entertaining um, uh, presentation by Mike Dilger um, from BBC One Show. Um, and we've also then had um, a couple of really good sessions yesterday on uh, workforce and workforce planning. David. And yeah, so uh, today we launched our EMS experience survey report uh, and some new resources for practices to sort of help them structure EMS and get the most out of the students and let the students get the most out of their placement. And it was nice. Um, this was the first student run session at Vetcher as well. So nice for a bit of a landmark on the 10th Vetcher as well. Did you get a good reaction? Yeah, it was really good. We, we had a fantastic audience and half of it was a panel and we had some really excellent questions. So looking forward to having the conversation with the rest of the profession. Fantastic. And Amanda? Good. I guess it feeds on a little bit from what Dave was saying that the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons has launched our graduate outcomes consultation at this show. So that's uh, come from the Vet Futures um, planning, I guess, um, for the Royal College to take a really in-depth look at veterinary undergraduate training and consult very widely with the whole profession and students um, to make sure that we're kind of uh, asking for the right things from the vet schools for the veterinary workforce of, of the next 20, 30 years. So I just encourage everybody to uh, please engage with the consultation because the more information and the more feedback we get from across the profession the better. Now there are a number of underlying issues as to why that's come about. I mean why are we looking at that now? I think it's a it's part of a bigger it's part of the bigger vet futures picture, which is really looking at what uh, the veterinary professions want to look like in 2030, and looking at current workforce issues, uh, recruitment retention in the profession, and making sure that our what we're asking the vet schools to deliver, because the vet schools curriculums are constantly evolving, but we really want to take a, a deep look at whether what we're asking them is to produce is actually what our undergraduates need to become successful, long-term, satisfied veterinary surgeons. So we're looking at EMS, we're looking at day one competencies, we're looking at PDP and we're looking specifically at general practice clinical training. So those are the four broad areas that we're really taking a very in-depth look at through the consultation. And we've got just the man with us to talk about that. You've done some work on EMS recently, haven't you, uh, David? So could you just outline that for us? Yeah, so we looked at um, sort of preclinical students before they started seeing practice, students who uh, were in the middle of seeing practice, and we really spoke to recent graduates about what from their EMS prepared them most for day one when they started the job as well. And we sort of identified a number of things. Firstly, there was a lot of support and a lot of sort of gratitude from students to the profession for taking them in and doing a lot of training to complement what we do at vet school. But also uh, a bit from also from talking to vets in practice, how maybe it was a bit variable in the quality of the experience you could get. And so we've launched a couple of resources to link into the bigger picture sort of teaching we get and to help sort of streamline, make the whole vet sort of vet team in the practice aware of what the student can do and what they want to get from it and thinking about who in the whole practice is the best person to teach them. And I think linking in with interprofessional education and what we can learn from vet nurses, because there's an awful lot of skills that we can learn there as well and reception team and the whole sort of side there is to try and streamline it and give some more structure. And obviously it's important that we produce the right kind of graduates in the right kind of way. I mean, are we not doing that at the moment then? No, I think, I think we are. I, I think it's all about making sure that we've got the right kind of expectations going forwards that that for um, for students that are applying for vet school and are going through vet school, 
as Amanda touched on, you know, just uh, making sure that the vet schools are preparing um, students for, um, you know, jobs in the in the profession as it's shaping up, you know, as, as you know, we are in 2018. I think that's all um, really important. I, I mentioned the, the Vet Future, uh, My Vet Future Careers Hub, and, and again, that is helping to sort of feed in to managing some of those expectations as an, at an early stage as to what life might be like as a as a vet coming out of vet school um, as well as offering resources for um, for people looking for a change of direction in their career once they're out but certainly um, in terms of what the um, students are are coming out of vet school at the minute we've got some of the smartest minds in the country that are coming out and, and we have to recognize that um, you know there is a role for the wider profession um, to assist those students into settling into life and in, 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 in professional life in 2018 it's a very different world that, that, that we're in and the, the, the profession is in a completely different shape as it was, than it was you know 10 or 15 years ago so and it's just really a recognition of that it's, it's multifactorial as well I mean I think Simon you touched on the fact we had some workforce panels on uh, gender uh, yesterday morning as well which were I was on the panel there it was a really brilliant session following on from a session where we had some really interesting research about um, the presence of gender discrimination within the profession so it's there's a lot of different factors feed into sort of recruitment and retention issues that we're seeing across profession it's not one organization or even one type of organization that can be responsible as a profession we need to take ownership of it and I, I think I'm delighted that we're all working together to do that. I mean, obviously there are a number of issues around retention, around pay gaps, around confidence, well-being. How important is it that the associations get together and work together? It's, it's absolutely crucial, you know, and I think that one of the one of the really useful uh, parts of, of the Vet Futures initiative generally is is that framework where, whereby BVA as a representative association and the Royal College um, as a regulatory body can actually get together and have sensible um, grown up conversations, if you like, about some of these really, really important issues. And I mean, the fact that we are looking now at identifying where there are gaps in our knowledge and, and the fantastic work that's been done by the University of Exeter. Um, in relation to that has, has provided some really useful insight um, and I think it was actually quite shocking for, for some people when, when they um, some of the information came out um, as to where we actually stood and, and you know, some of the, the biases that are there um, whether they're intentioned or not um, I think was really quite surprising for a lot of people and a lot of people came out thinking Wow, you know, we've, you know, there's something really, you know, we need to change here going forward. So, yeah, it, but but that kind of combined approach is absolutely crucial. I'm bringing in the students at an early stage and other stakeholders. Um, you know, we've uh, one of the the other things that we did at the show was to. Um, to champion um, the Inspired by Vet Futures um, initiative and uh, Vet Stay Go Diversify um, as, a, as a Facebook forum then was, was uh, given the opportunity to present some of, of what they've been doing um, in terms of in that engagement with, with the broader sort of part of the profession around some of these really important issues. And as we touched on, it's vital the students are uh, part of this conversation, David. I mean, have you been, any other students you've been chatting that there are a lot of students here over the last two days? Yes, it's been quite good that sort of as part of the um, sort of package of us running the first student session, uh, we also had um, like a rate for students as well, which made um, the whole of Vetcher a bit more accessible to students. And then we had 60 or 70 along today, and this is the first year and next year, hopefully we'll have more. And it's been a really good chance for students to be aware of the kind of support and how sort of how well the whole profession think of us and how much they want to support us. And I think that's what's come out of some of the EMS conversations with practitioners as well, is that everybody takes EMS students because they want to invest in the future of the profession. Mm -hmm. They want to pay it forwards. And I think it's just really welcoming for the profession to have students along to these sorts of things and um, have us as the voice in the room and yep. it's a good profession yeah. to get into. Yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, vet futures and all these things going on. It's important to remember, I guess, the veterinary profession has always been looking at itself, challenging itself. And how important is it that continues to happen? Come on. I think it's always important to look to the future and the future never stands still. So, so you're absolutely right. I mean, the profession's changed immeasurably from 200 years ago, 100 years ago, 50 years ago. So it is super important that we keep keep looking to the future and keep making sure that we're planning so that we are we are a profession that um, thrives in the 21st century. 
And there's a, obviously multifactorial challenges out there. And I mean, it's, it's important to remember that it's a good thing to do. It's a great profession to work in. It's, uh, there's a lot of positivity out there as well, isn't there, Simon? Yeah, uh, um, yeah again, ab absolutely. Um, you know, certainly when I made my kind of few opening remarks yesterday morning, one of the things that I touched on was that my theme for the year is one veterinary community. And actually London Vet Show really gives people the opportunity to really embrace that because, uh, you know, the, a lot of people will come along and, and, and be there for, for a bit of CPD. Um, but, but actually the opportunity to interact with um, the broader veterinary community, uh, working with, with vets, nurses, with other vets, catching up with colleagues, um, the opportunity to you know, walk the floor at the trade show and, and, and uh, work alongside uh, you know, companies that are offering possibly new products or new services. That's all part of, of, of the London Vet Show experience. And I think that's really important that, um, that again, in terms of how we're working on on a day-to-day -day basis that we can leave our practices or our uh, academic institutions or whatever and, and come together for a couple of years and uh, a couple of days and, and share those experiences. I think it's, it's really, really important that we can do that. So we obviously heard the concerns of the associations and the thoughts of the, of, of the, uh, the college, but I mean, what, what's, uh, what concerns the veterinary community, sorry, the students at the moment? I mean, what's the big issue? I think, um, EMS is always up there, but I think it's really reassuring that, you know, some of the work we've done linking into the graduate outcomes conversation that's going forwards is that obviously we're very well listened to and I think most of our concerns, we, we kind of, we're in the room, we're having the conversations and with the vet schools, with BVA, with the Royal College, um, we're looking at those sort of things as well. Um, something that's always been quite paramount is support as a new graduate as well and over the years we've seen loads more work done on that and I think graduate outcomes will look at year one competencies and that side of things and you know I think support is something that we've we're very aware of that we'd like when we come out the other side and coming to this it's really really reassuring that the whole profession takes that really seriously. And it's vital that association like the AVS continues to champion the uh, cause of vets. Yeah absolutely and I think um, you know we'll always make sure we are in the room and we're doing more of these sorts of things and making sure that we're present to the whole profession and you know, I'm sure there's a good future for AVS as well. Um, yeah. Lots of really good young reps coming through as well, and it should be an exciting time. And you're all vets here, finally. Um, what's great about being a vet? I, I, for me, it's the diversity. Um, I, I have to say, you know, I've had a couple of things uh, have cropped up during my career that have taken me off in a different direction. And it's just, it's, the, it's been the opportunities that have been put in front of me have just been absolutely fantastic. Um, the sense of community, um, you know, over the 20, 25 years that I've been involved with the profession has been absolutely um, fantastic. And uh, I was once upon a time on AVS committee. So it's, uh, it, you know, uh, it's really interesting just to be able to kind of reflect back from the late 90s through to you know what, what I'm doing just now as BVA president um, and those opportunities have been afforded through the support of um, a number of, of, of vets um, within the veterinary community over that last sort of 20-25 years. Same question to you Amanda. I, I was actually, Simon stole my word because I think I was going to say the diversity of options available because <coughs> excuse me certainly I, I would never have predicted my career Doing, going where it's gone and I've had fantastic opportunities. Um, I'm also obviously <clears throat> I'm married to a vet and my brother's a vet and his, his wife's a vet and we all have very different careers that, that fit us all very well. Um, and I think that the variety of things that's available that you can do. Uh, and I think as Simon said, that sense of, um, that sense that we're all, although we all do different things, we're all actually fulfilling a really important role in society as well. So we think we can feel good about all of those different roles that we do. I, I guess that's the point, isn't it? I mean, it's not just about being a practicing vet. The veterinary degree does open up. It's a passport uh, to a whole load of other careers, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think um, coming to this has really reinforced that and seeing a lot of the things on uh, the BVA streams and with the Stego Diversify Group and that side of things, I think students are more aware of the whole plethora of things that we can do um, with our degree. Um, not just clinical practice, but obviously clinical practice is still really important and it's nice to know that we have a lot of options open and it's not just the one week, but everyone's always going to appreciate clinical practice. So. And just going forward for 2019, what are going to be some, some, some big things BVA are going to be looking at? Brexit. <laughs> it's the elephant in the room. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's been really interesting, actually, even over the last couple of days, you know, <laughs> I, you know, um, 
literally as uh, we had Angela Smith, uh, you know, doing a, a session for us yesterday on, uh, you know, whether Brexit was going to be good or bad for animal welfare. And even during her address, um, the, the the cabinet was in, in meltdown. So it was uh, um, with, yeah, it's, we're in a, we're in this particular year, we're in a, in a position of real flux uh, politically and, and the knock on effects of that on animal health, animal welfare, veterinary capacity, veterinary capability, um, certification, shortage occupation lists, the whole um, raft of different elements which are which are kind of linked directly or indirectly to, to Brexit. So certainly for, for the next year going forwards, uh, it'll be really interesting by London Vet Show 2019 to actually be able to reflect on, on some of the things over the next year. And obviously Brexit's going to be exercising you guys at the college, um, but what are going to be some of the other issues? I'm thinking telemedicine, obviously the grad outcomes stuff as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we are um, sort of midway through our 2017 to 19 strategic plan where we committed to look at innovation in a variety of different ways in the profession. Um, also to look at, I think, as Simon said, you know, some of the broader um, is workforce issues and um, how we can expand the role of the veterinary nurse potentially and sort of the vet led team initiative. So we're looking at a whole range of um, actions there to complete our 2017 to 19 strategic plan and we'll actually soon be kicking off the planning the planning for the next one and and personally I know I've been very public about this but raising the awareness around sort of diversity in, in all its forms not just gender diversity but socioeconomic and racial diversity as well is a, an important um, immediate project for, for me as well as well as fitting with our overall plan. And for you David what is it getting qualified? <laughs> yeah you know hopefully hopefully sort of Next July, I'm hopefully I'll have those uh, those letters after my name. Um, sort of AVS wise, um, we've sort of moved uh, how we run now, and each president has their own project. Obviously, mine's quite clearly been the EMS side of things. Um, I know my successor's looking at some really interesting welfare and mental health things. So, you know, if we have a session at uh, Vetlo 2019, I think we'll we'll have some interesting things to present by then as well. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot, guys, and see you all next year.